Just off of Montlake Boulevard lies Old Heck Ed. No team has won more games in its current arena than the Washington Huskies. Lorenzo Romar's troops added two more wins to start the new season. Game one marked the start of a new generation for Husky Hoops. A cast of newcomers took the court and made their presence felt. John Brockman and Spencer Hawes especially delivered mightily on high expectations. Game two, a change of style. Romar said, boys, take the open three and take them, the Huskies did. All told, a school record 17 bombs found their mark. The scoreboard, well, they needed that third digit. Tonight, a new challenge awaits, and it starts right now on FSN. It's not exactly like looking in the mirror, but tonight Washington faces a team that, like the Huskies, has been to the NCAA tournament three years in a row. Washington and Northern Iowa tonight in the championship game of the Basketball Travelers Classic in Seattle. Welcome in, Brian Davis and Bob Weiss. More college hoop on FSN. A lot of questions about Lorenzo Romar's young guns at Washington. The freshmen have stepped up and made quite a statement the first couple of games. Let's talk particularly about Quincy Pondexter. By average, 18 points and six rebounds. And it's a positive statement it has been. And one of the most steady guys is Pondexter. Here you'll see him taking a couple jump shots. It's not what he was noted for coming in, but it does show you his versatility. Mostly as a scorer, he's going to be a guy on the break, or like you see in here, right inside. But he's got other values, too. An unselfish player, and I think that that has become a trait early on of this young Washington team. That one and the ability to give you tremendous energy on the defensive end. He's got great feet, and he knows how to play defense, and he is ultra-aggressive and terrific at containing people on the perimeter. Huskies point 102 points last night on Nichols State, but tonight in the Panthers, they face a team that has made its living defensively. They were top 10 in the United States last year, holding opponents to an average 57 points a game. Now, Greg McDermott has moved on to Iowa State, but his lead assistant, Ben Jacobson, has taken over the program. He's been playing in this system for almost 20 years, and he's got quite a point guard or leader on this team, the four-year starter, Brooks McCowan. Yes, yeah, so McCowan, great point guard. He's not really sure. You see him make two shots here, but he's, he's struggling a little bit from the line. But he's carrying a team. He runs a team. He's got 13 assists. The next closest guy to him on his team has three assists in these past two games. So he's got a runner from the outside. And they get a kid named Coleman in the middle. He's tough, too. UNI shows terrific discipline, and we'll have to see tonight. It could come down to who's outside shots ball. Washington with the record 17 last night. Justin Dentman made a career high four, but another question, okay, can he distribute the basketball and limit his turnovers? Could be a key tonight. We'll find out. Tip off next on FSN. College basketball on FSN is brought to you by Banner Bank. Better ideas, better banking. Three games and three nights. Great way to start the season. This will be for the championship of the Basketball Travelers Classic. And for Lorenzo Romar and the Washington Huskies, starting lineup that includes two guys in Quincy Pondexter shooting 65 percent from the floor, and John Brockman is shooting 67 percent. Pause only 16 minutes last night. Appleby, though, the three point bomb, one of six Washington players in double figures. Romar did not like the fact that his ball club turned it over 23 times. That allowed Nichols State to get back into the ball game after Washington had led by as many as 40 points. For the Panthers of Northern Iowa, also for Ben Jacobson's side, a young contingent with some very veteran leadership. We've talked about Brooks McCowan, Travis Brown last night against Pepperdine had 16 points and seven rebounds. He's shooting 53 percent for the tournament. Jacobson in his first year as the head coach, he was, as I mentioned, Greg McDermott's lead assistant before McDermott went to Iowa State. But all the way back to his playing days at North Dakota, Jacobson has been playing in this system for the better part of 20 years. And his team runs it pretty well. They've... We'll see if uh, Washington over the past two nights has taken both teams completely out of what they wanted to do. 
Well, so we'll see if they can do that tonight, but there's one of those turnovers you were talking about. Ball was tipped Didn't away by ball was tipped away by Grant Stout. Now here's McCowan who had eight assists last night. Guarded way out top by Dentman, a reach in off the ball. Brockman picks up a quick one there. Going to get a little physical down there. One thing Washington has is a little bit of size advantage. Northern Iowa has a seven foot one freshman coming off of the bench. But again, Northern Iowa very well disciplined. Stout, all Missouri Valley. Working a two man game right now with McCowan. Now puts it on the floor, looking along the baseline for his center, Eric Coleman. Battle for the offensive rebound to Stout, and he gets another. Oh, that could be two on Brockman if they call it that way. Well, for sure, Stout is going to go to the line, and uh, the foul called on Spencer Hawes, yeah, the seven-foot freshman out of Seattle Prep High School. That was uh, that was good. I think they could have ended up calling that on either man. All right, we got two fellas. Two. Hawes got him first. Hawes was there first. Stout. All MVC Missouri Valley. They put four teams in the NCAA tournament a year ago. He was also on the Mo Valley's all defensive squad. This senior out of New Sharon, Iowa. And Washington trails for the first time this season. <laughs> That's right. Pondexter looking for a rub from Brockman. For our Portland audience who have just seen the Blazers go down to defeat, welcome in college basketball on FSN. Brian Davis and Bob Weiss, the championship game of the Basketball Travelers Classic at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle, Washington, and Northern Iowa. The Panthers with the 2 0 lead as Washington battles foul trouble. And shooting difficulties early on, but now a turnover against the Panthers and McCowan, the point guard, puts the ball back in the I Huskies' was, hands. I was interested in seeing how they were going to play Hawes in the post. I talked to Coach uh, Jacobson before uh, the game, and he said they were worried about double teaming him because of his, his passing abilities. So they played him one on one, played him straight up, and he missed a shot. Brockman's offensive rebound batted away by Stout in the scramble. It will be Washington's ball. McCown let it go out because he <laughs> thought it last touched White. You know what? If you can get the ball, the coach always tells you, grab it. You don't want to put the decision in somebody else's hands. If you can get to it, grab it. I'll tell you what, 32 blue is really showing well early. Only a minute and a half gone. Very impressed, though, with the early play of Stout. Physical. Energetic Brockman posting up Coleman can't get the roll and Coleman's rebound on the run out Jared Joston nice feed to the trailing stout this is a good basketball team now they play a very containing defense they don't put a whole lot of pressure on you they don't have a lot of quickness as you just saw there Denman can get to the hole around their guards so they don't have the guards to put a whole lot of pressure on you but they do protect the paint for the most part. That time, Dummy got all the way in to the basket. You won't see that too much tonight, I don't believe. As is the Huskies' custom, Denton pushing the opposing point guard way out high. Hard pick set for McCown by Stout, but poor finish. Pondexter in transition. Hawes does not have any blocks yet, but he changed two shots so far. Tough feed, though, inside. Pondexter wasn't ready for it. Is this going to be on Dentman? Is feet tangled with Joston? Jared Joston, the junior out of Webster City, Iowa. Dentman's foul as Hawes early on still trying to get his feet under him. Remember, he has not played but a few days of camp after undergoing oh, had about stop. three That's practices. Exactly right. So his game conditioning is not where it will eventually be. Good feed inside Coleman for Stout in the finish. Well, so far, Iowa, Northern Iowa has been able to operate their offense. The, the pressure that uh, we've seen in the last couple of nights is not affecting them as much. You see it, a little more seasoned team here. Appleby will go to the free throw line. Great move to spin. He draws the foul on Joston. Plus one. 
He said he wanted to expand his game a little bit more this year, and uh, there was a great example of him trying to do it. Watch Jostin. He, he is averaging 32 minutes a game, You're playing three in three nights. Wonder whether that'll catch up to a guy. These guys are in such great shape. I really doubt it's going to make too much of a difference. You notice Appleby moving into the paint. Last year, 85% of his shots beyond the arc, and now comes Husky's pressure. Cowan, eight assists to go on, along with 11 points last night, a blowout victory over Pepperdine. Jordan Eagleseed, the freshman center on the floor, battling in the post. Blocked out, boxed out, so Pondexter can come away with the ball. Brockman likes this shot, won't fall for him. Out of bounds off of Hans Gasser, the senior from Issaquah, Washington. This young team's going to see how they have to execute tonight. The last two games they've had, they played against a zone, and they played against a double team press. So that they got a lot of easy shots off of both of those things. Tonight, they're going to have to execute to get the same shots. Pondex relieves, and another California into the lineup, the freshman Adrian Oliver. He will play the off guard, but also spell Denton at time on the point. And let Jostin handle the basketball from time to time. Now he works Appleby inside. Eagles, Cedar, nice finish. For a young man who had eight points and seven rebounds in only 14 minutes last night against Pepperdine. No, and they uh, they were happy with his performance. He's not quite as talented as Washington's uh, freshman, but uh, he is big and and they're happy with him. Brockman picks up his second foul. Northern Iowa most certainly has come to play and has an early lead. Seven in the very competitive Missouri Valley Conference tied for fifth and got an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament again for the third consecutive year. They went out in the first round at Georgetown, but all three of their appearances, they've lost all three, one and done all of those losses by five points. John Brockman remains in the game, but with two personal fouls. And uh, you have given a Hawes a rest early here, and uh, you know, you have mentioned in the open about the defense of this Northern Iowa team. 28% uh, for Washington so far. It's very early, but still, they're, they're seeing some things they haven't seen with these other two teams. Gentman escorting McCowan up the floor, pokes it. Rockman had a chance. His effort spreads the floor for the Panthers. A lot of set plays off man to man defense. They don't mind using a lot of shot clock inside 10. Stout, who has six of UNI's eight points, misses there, and Eagle Cedar stripped of the ball off the carom. Took a while to get a handle on that. Because you need a stick sometimes to do that thing. Dittman has it poked away. Justin Dittman last night, six assists and four turnovers. Spencer Haas back into the ball game, played 16 minutes last night, so some concerns voiced to Lorenzo Romar. How is he? He's fine, but you come back and all of a sudden you're running on the floor more than you have in a month. And the first night you're dreaming of the floor. The second night it catches up with you a lot of times. So this is a good week for him to get back into playing shape. But I would say by the end of this week, He'll be in pretty good shape. Because he was in such good shape prior to the injury. Oz, just a month and change removed from arthroscopic knee surgery. Back on the floor. Adrian Oliver turned the ball over. They are emphasizing the carry rule this year. You see it in the college game, also in the pro game. And Oliver charged with Washington's fourth turnover. Must have been a national edict to come down to get both college and pros at the same time calling that. Hit, uh, Oliver is going to be a guy that can create. He got called with a, with a turn the ball over there. Though. Adam Cook, freshman out of a Schwabenon, Wisconsin, outside of Green Bay onto the floor. Again, part of 
Jacobson's freshman rotation. Hawes working on Cook and scoring. He's going to have the advantage down there if they can get him the ball. He's got that little baby hook. He can spin. He can pass the ball out of traffic. Might be a real good way to, to practice defense because they're playing very good defense so far. Again, Hawes didn't get a block. He got a change, though. That's three of them he's changed. Travis Brown missed the shot. Stoppage in play. Let's take a look at Hawes' work the other end. He can get that shot off about anybody. Northern Iowa three of ten from the floor. Washington three of nine. So the defense is wearing each other out in the early going at the Bank of America Arena. Jostin into the paint, but Coleman on the pick committed a personal foul. You know, a lot of times that is the fact the, the guy that causes that is the man with the ball because he leaves. The big man is going out to set the pick. The guard leaves too early. He catches you moving. You, the guard is in charge of that play uh, on when it's going to happen, and he can get the foul trouble on a big man quick. Pondexter feathers it in for Haas. Can't find iron, but Oliver does with another offensive rebound for Washington, a strength of both teams. Early Washington advantage to Washington. They're going to keep these, keep this pressure up until they crack. They'll keep it on them. Floating jumper. Now there's a lot of pressure, but this team isn't panicking. They they have, they're playing with a lot of poison control. Kajoa Heligba, yet another freshman from Oakdale, Minnesota, scoring the bucket. Coleman's rebound and coming away from the ball. Pondexter just floored a Heligba. Well, I think he was uh, freeing himself. I think he was being held. They'll probably, they, they may call this on both of them. Double foul. I think you got it, coach. Take a look at the right side of your screen. There you go. Uh, you know, a Heligba. I wonder if he's a soccer fan. <laughs> I don't know, but he looked like Reggie Evans gave him flopping lessons during the <laughs> summer. At least in basketball, they don't have to bring the stretcher out when a guy flops like that. <laughs> I know. You know, you do see that in, uh, in soccer. They take him off the stretcher and they get a drink of water, come running back. As they sort it out, this will be Panthers basketball. And I'm talking about European soccer, not our American soccer. Oh, there is the thought. <laughs> now comes full court pressure. Now you see that in uh, in basketball too. The Europeans, you know, Vladi Divac, uh, a lot of those guys like to flop. Heligba giving up a few inches to Pondexter, trying to pull Washington apart with ball movement, but he puts it on the floor and Haas blocks the pass. It is Panthers basketball with 12 to shoot. If he's got a friendly statistician over there, he'll give him a, a block for a shot. But uh, <laughs> I think you were right. He was passing that ball. But that was a great rotation because that was actually Hans's rotation. But Hans got caught outside his man and couldn't make it. So Hans came all the way over from the way on the weak side. Oh, nice curl. Jostin can't get it to drop Pondexter. Another rebound. Panthers get back well in transition. McCown picked off by Pondexter, who converts it. I think that'll go on the stat sheet as half a turnover because he almost threw that ball away. Quincy out fought him for the ball, made the layup. I got it, I got it, I don't got it. <laughs> Nobody but Stout on the floor for Washington has scored, or rather for Northern Iowa. Now you're seeing that swarming pressure. And great feet by Pondexter. Ooh. Oh, left his feet. Got him in the time. air. Oh, yeah. Not travel. <laughs> Chris Rastatter, the official on the near side, oh, had the better look at it. Oh, he did walk. Up for me. What is this? Oh. 
Can you see that? Could you see his foot move on that shot? I know. Let me see. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, he moved. That, that, yeah, that'd be good to show. Just uh, quench his feet and the fact that you, you got to be careful at the end not to go up. How many fouls does Pondexter have? Uh, is that 24? He's, he's, one. Got, yeah, he's, he's got, got one. one. See, that would have been two fouls. That would have been a big play. That would be a good thing to point out. He has he has three rebounds, Bob. Has he? Okay. Nine. No, nine. Brockman's got two now, too. Yes. So. I don't need these because I've got that, but he takes one. He takes one. All right. You can open this up room. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty good basketball early. Both teams trying to find a rhythm. Brian Davis and Bob Weiss at the Bank of America Arena, where McCown has just been called for a travel when he thought he was going to the line for a three point play. Well, this just shows you Quincy's great feet. That's a good point guard there. Only trouble is you don't want to go for that one. But you can see in there where he, he moved both feet. He moved them just a little bit. But that was a big play because that would have been Quincy's second foul. And you already got Burmeister over there with two fouls. So big play for Quincy to not pick that foul up. Uh, but it wasn't any of his doing. He, he got lucky. Nine rebounds for Washington. Pondexter, the freshman, has three of those seven boards for the Panthers of UNI. Hawes working on Stout on the block as his pocket pick by McCallum. Oh. All alone. Jones can't get it to drop. Northern Iowa, four of 13 from the floor. Appleby in transition. Washington last night sank a School record 17 three pointers 0 for 3 tonight. Yeah, I think I said uh, Burmeister had two fouls, which is hard to do from the bench, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Got a pretty long reach. Coleman off the floater from Stout and scores. Pond Dexter. Spinning into a double team. Thought maybe he got hit in the arm. Stout has four rebounds and Coleman left alone again. And uh, Coach Romar is not going to like that one. His team's got to get back. Uh, if you're a guard, and you see a big man run by you, and you're the you're the only line of defense. You got to go with it. Oliver nearly loses it. Decides to go up with it, and he traveled with the ball. Tough shot. Trying to get it over stop but let's take a look at the other end Panthers on the run out. Was, There's was quite a delay there but Coleman just took off got behind everybody he had all kinds of time you know when you play the same system and again Ben Jacobson played it under his lead assistant now Rich Glass at North Dakota Greg McDermott was an assistant on that club then eventually took over the UNI side they've been running this and when you're so well schooled in the system you can broaden from that base the Panthers seem to have quite a few clubs in the back they do and they're uh, they're not panicking with all this pressure Eagles. McGowan again he's uh, he's like one for seven on threes this year and uh, now he's one for eight I believe Artem Wallace into the ball game, the sophomore out of Toledo, Illinois. He had quite an adventure last night. Nine points, eight rebounds, and fouled out in 13 minutes time. That's a Danny Fortune line. <laughs> Same number, no, too. Not really. He didn't get any technicals, did he? Oh, no, that's true, but he's showing a little frustration out there. 16 fouls. Brown slashing. Eagle Cedar scoring, and Nelson, Phil Nelson into the ball game, went over his back. So Eagle Cedar with an opportunity for a three point play and suddenly Northern Iowa sitting on a five point lead and coach has to be ecstatic with his big his big freshman being able to do, put this play on poise 
Nice fake. Get somebody in the air. Make the contact and the free throw. So on top of that, I think he's left handed. Yes, sir. Seven That's foot right. one, 255 pounds. Freshman out of Bellevue, Iowa. Seven point run now for the Panthers. Brandon Burmeister had a team and career high 17 points last night. Wallace in the post. Spinning on Eagle Cedar. Pondexter another rebound and he converts. And those points are so valuable. When you get an offensive rebound and put it back, that, that's an extra basket. I mean, there's no other way you could have scored on that. You, you missed, you're going down the floor, and you're just going out there and getting hustle points for your team. Six of the Huskies, 12 rebounds on the offensive glass. Well, they're getting lots of opportunities, which is not a good thing because they're missing a lot of shots. Eagle Cedar again into the trees. Panthers like to work the offensive boards as well. Three out of eight for them tonight. Eagle Cedar has seven points to lead all scores. And that was a, that pass was right on the money. And he handled it the exact way you want your big man to do it. He catches it. He kept the ball high. I bet that ball didn't come below eight and a half feet the whole play once he caught it. He just went right back up with it. Squadron and substitution Travis Brown. 16 points last night against Pepperdine. Whistled for the personal as he tried to get through a screen and Burmeister. Long Dentman. Another offensive rebound. Starts Another through. opportunity at one. Yeah. Wallace up over Coleman gets it back. A little short with the put back this time. Coleman says I'll take it. Wallace has had three really good looks. He made two nice moves offensively. Just missed them both and then got an offensive rebound and missed a fairly uh, a high percentage shot that time too. Jostin for Coleman. Takes Wallace away. Gives the smaller guys a little bit of room down low if they choose to use it. Play clock to five. Coleman left alone. Nelson comes to defend him but a little bit too late. Coleman scores. He's got a half dozen. This is going to be a great learning experience for these Huskies. They're playing against a, a team that uh, has a lot of poise and talent. Panthers Here comes another eight. one. Whoops. Here's Jostin. Nelson recovers the freshman out of Kaiser, Oregon. The kick out along the baseline. He ran into Pondexter and is whistled for the offensive foul. Time is taken. Seven and a half minutes remaining. First half. Panthers are in the house with an eight point lead. Northern Iowa with nine points off of seven Washington turnovers exacerbating the Huskies problem against a disciplined patient Panthers team. Yes this team you'll notice the clock is down to five so they run a pick and roll and they've got everybody on the right side there's nobody left to rotate to Coleman. Nelson comes over but as far as he can get is about eight feet. Got a number of chances too. This the third time they've nearly caught Washington with its pants down on the run out. And Pondexter gets there from the weak side. Romar works very very hard on that, and with great success so far. Pondexter two of three from the floor, four points, four rebounds to lead Washington. A lot of activity. Underneath Kajoa Helikba. Check that Brown assessed his second personal foul, and now both teams in the bonus. Pond Dexter will go to the line one and one. Freshman out of San Joaquin Memorial High School in Fresno. Good hustle by Dentman keeps it alive for Washington. Coleman won't bite, won't come out to meet Hawes. Washington works the other side. Brockman on the reverse. Ran right past the freshman Cook. <laughs> Welcome to Vision One. <laughs> great spin move. And it's hard to do that without traveling. He has great footwork on that play. Veet finds Coleman. Adam Veet on the floor. There's great Jesus. execution on that play. Coleman has scored eight now. That's six in a row for Coleman for Northern Iowa. 
We'll check. Hey, get in. Get in. All right, watch this coming here. This is pa pause it when they get pause it right there. This is a set play. This is coming out of a timeout after a free throw. He's faking that pick and now he's slipping. You see how they got everybody raised on that right side. Great execution. Dittman drops the first. Coleman has the last couple of Northern Iowa baskets. Good battle with John Brockman, who picked up two fouls early, but has been able to keep it clean since. Brockman has not had many scoring opportunities. One out of four from the floor tonight. Now this is a different type of defense. They are going to play you, make you shoot it from the outside. The only one Brockman got was a on a post up. He's not going to get too many slashes where this this team doesn't cover the paint. There's V for three. Nobody's hit one yet. Teams combined 0 for eight. Dentman. Look at Brockman come flying in from backside to earn a jump ball. You know, he didn't score in that play, but that is what Dentman can do. When your things are blogging down on you, he can just break his man down. He breaks his man down, gets to the hole, and when that happens, other people release. Their big people are worried about trying to get a block, and of course, that opens it up for a guy like Brockman to come in there and get the, the rebound. Possession arrow. Favors Northern Iowa and how about Brockman coming all the way back Bob he started the play he got the rebound made the outlet goes down and gets the uh, on a fast dribble goes down and gets the rebound. Take a look at the ball distribution which is usually a strength of Washington as well as the Panthers but not tonight Stout traveled with the basketball. <laughs> Fifth turnover for you and I. I don't know if you can travel if you don't have the ball. It seemed like everybody was battling for that. But you know what? I haven't seen him make a mistake yet on the replay, so I'll go with the official. Well, then I was a team that by average only turned it over 11 or 12 times last year in that run to the NCAA tournament. Averaging 14 here, Brockman backside. Oh! No love from the iron. Everything but the finish. Yes, nice move. But I tell you what, there was some good defense out there in that a lot of teams would just hammer you. But these guys realize they got the big fella back. Oh, there's Brockman's third. And now they will not a, not a shooting foul. McCown trying to talk him into it, but he's not going to get it. But there it is, third personal foul. Washington shot 54% the first two games, seven of 24. Coach, that's 29% so far tonight. And Brockman's going to have to sit. And Washington can score at a higher clip. What they're having to do is learn how to score, how to get the shots. They got to get patient. Everything came so easy the last couple nights. And they showed great basketball abilities. They showed great basketball instincts. But now they've got to make an adjustment and, it, and execute and then do the same basketball thing. Gasser replaces him in the lineup. Pondexter looking for Haas, and it was tangled up with Eagle Cedar and threw it away. Appeared to be contact, but play on. Eagle Cedar did a great job. He was battling Hawes so hard that Hawes, that ball was a little bit out of his reach. He didn't have his footing to go get it because he was still battling for position. Cowan takes the play from Jacobson. And here we go. Stout forcing Gasser to scramble to recover. Good rotation. McCowan is fouled by Pondexter. Romar can't believe it. Romar's trying to get him on a hook. He's trying anything he can. He's trying to get a little energy back into his team. Second personal. On Pondexter and McCowan will shoot one plus the bonus. 
Five of six in the tournament, six of seven. He earns the extra shot. For the tournament, McCowan from the floor, only 29%. One of seven from beyond the arc. Well, one of eight, because he missed one tonight, too. There you go. But a four-year starter at Northern Iowa who has really embraced and processed what the coaches have taught him. And he runs this offense well. An eight point, almost half the assists. That's right. Eight point Panthers advantage. Appleby from three. First one goes down. And that was nice execution. He made a cut, then backed up. Hawes pinned his man wide open. Now tight pressure. McCowan denied the opportunity to get involved as Pondexter picked him up. Jostin brings it up. Under the watch of Dentman, the sophomore out of Carbondale, Illinois. And Pondexter's got to be a little careful now because he's playing a, against a cute offensive player that can draw a foul on you. Going the other way inside, I think Stout and Gasser got tied up. Or was that Eagle Cedar? I think it was Eagle Cedar. Nine team fouls, so both sides will be in the super bonus. The next common foul. Oliver back onto the floor. Appleby loses feet, spins and scores. Consecutive baskets for the sophomore, rather the junior from Stanwood, Washington. Washington back within three. McCowan looking Ooh. for Coleman on the seventh turnover. I think Washington's feeling a little more comfortable now Washington. down at their offensive end. They're, they're executing. They've scored on a couple nice patterns now. I think they're going to be okay. Washington was down eight, but where do you go when you're hungry for points? You go to Applebee's. Oh. <laughs> okay, great execution right here. They were looking for that play the whole way. Nice delivery. And then here now they instead of going in and coming out he starts out and comes in trying to get a cut to the basket when it's not there. He spins away shoots a jump shot. You know at the front end of that sequence you see Appleby just sort of easing into the corner kind of puts his man to sleep and then he busts out to the elbow and makes everything else happen. Yeah this whole game is a change of speeds and fooling your opponent lulling him into sleep. Oh we're going to see his own now. This is where Washington can make its money. I was going to say get another one. Oops. Pauses rebound another offensive board and oh, the big guys are getting nothing tonight. No love from the rim. Now he and Wallace have both missed shots they're going to make about 60 70 percent of the time and Brockman too. Coleman puts it on the floor. Oz disrupted the shot. Had four guys back, so that gives the Panthers a chance to set up defensively. Over Haas's back, Coleman beats everybody to the other end of the floor and scores. Coleman can run for a big oh. one. He got out quick. He has 10. Dentman, short. Coleman's rebound. His fifth. Cowan needs to redirect the freshman Stephen Jones. Little misdirection. Coleman drives and is called for the charge. Gasser, the senior, one of two on Washington's roster, did a nice job of getting set, drawing the charge. This is great defense coming over from that weak side. And I'll tell you the nice thing. That Northern Iowa did. They ran two plays that looked the same. They ran them in a sequence. And the second one was to clear out that left side. They want to drive, get a foul on Hawes, and then uh, he wasn't buying it. Great fill in from the weak side by Hunt. No free throws on player control fouls. Washington still with 20 and change on the shot clock. Hawes trying to post up Stout and walks. Ten turns now for Washington. Too many. Too many against a team like this. At eight in the first half, 
last night against Nichols State. Wound up with 23 on the night. Lamar thought they went to sleep. Young team relaxed. Can't go to sleep on a team that's been to the NCAA tournament three years running. And a lot of people back. Stout had nothing, decided to go over the seven-footer Haas to score. Oh, give and go. Haas to pick and then back to the rack for the feed from Oliver. You know, if he can add a little enthusiasm there at the end, that would be better, but uh, <laughs> he was excited about that one. Two freshmen. Making that play happen. Beaten Appleby in a good battle. Stout works Hawes. As it tipped away. I don't know who was working who there. Dentman at the elbow. Defense leads the scores. Here they go. They're getting pumped. Everybody's getting into it here. Northern Iowa had a lot of things that Washington didn't seem prepared for. The Huskies seem to be finding a rhythm. Okay. They have a chance here with a minute and change remaining. Watch this pick and roll. Things break down. Oliver drags him a little further. Now he's open. Bang. And watch. Now they're going at Haas. Haas does a great job keeping his feet. Not bringing his arm down. That's good defense. And Dentman, he knows how to take advantage of it. Give me an open court. I'll put it in the hole. Oh, I mentioned to you that Northern Iowa allowed the other guy an average 57 points a game last year. Washington scored as few as 28. That was their lowest halftime score. They're sitting on 26. We'll probably get past that, but not by much. Stay tuned after the game for FSN Live. We break down the Huskies' action here at the B of A. Huskies and Cougars recalled their greatest Apple Cup moments. Huge rivalry game this week. Plus, we catch up with Bobby Jones, who's back in town with the Philadelphia 76ers. FSN Live after the game on FSN Northwest. There's that slip play again. Another pick. Good help by Wallace. Washington ready for it this time. Oliver reached in. Oh. Jim Duran said didn't even bat an eye said let's just not let's stop right here. Uh, I thought that was pretty decent defense. Lorenzo so says <laughs> so <did> Lorenzo. <laughs> he says he's saying the exact same thing. Shooters roll for Jones. Freshman out of Bethalto Illinois. Cedar Falls, Iowa, home of you and I, about 90 miles west of the Illinois line. So, getting a kid from downstate Illinois does make sense. He's two for two, and that lead is back to five. They said the pick and roll worked once. Let's do it again. Dentman shows and goes and gets it back and scores. <laughs> Knocked the ball loose, picked it up, laid it in. 26 left. Northern Iowa should get the last shot. If the pressure can make them take the shot early, they get another shot out. Shot clock is off. The count is not going to rattle up. See what he takes it down to. If he takes it under seven, they're definitely going to get the last shot. That's what he did. It is 4 3, a little bit long. Oliver with the prayer. Ooh. Oliver's came closer. That would have been the million dollar shot right there if it was a halftime half court contest. Washington held the 38% shooting. Panthers got their feet under him after a rough start, wound up shooting 46% in the first half. It's going to be interesting to see how Washington adjusts at halftime. UNI's lead by a triple. Nobody's getting the big ones to fall. Panthers. 38, 31, 30, 28. Post play has helped to dictate this. Bobby Jones, one of the Husky stars from last year's Sweet 16 team, in town with the Philadelphia 76ers to play the Sonics. 
And he's in the house here tonight watching his team trailing Northern Iowa going into the second half post play a big part of the story it was working for the Panthers. Oh it certainly was 25 of the 31 points come from the center and power forward position. They're scoring all night. Coleman Coleman usually scores. He, he is very mobile very talented big man. But he's getting help from the other guys inside so that they've got they're doing well stout and the freshman Eggle Cedar who had a terrific run in only three minutes of play those seven points. Washington wanted production of the post isn't getting it so it's up to the guards like Quincy Pondexter. Pondexter got a nice one there here he gets a hustle one off the rebound. Only got four points but he's he's given a lot of energy. Now you'll see him down here at the other end coming over drawing the charge. And that's one of the strong points of this team. Nobody forces it. If they're not getting the shots, they'll just play the game. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens second half. Pond Dexter, actually the wingman at the three, but his four men, Brockman on the bench with three fouls, managed only seven points. And so the guards scored 18 of Washington's 28 points. Field goals, the raw numbers only tell part of the story. Northern Iowa 0 4 beyond the arc, but last night Washington made 17 three point baskets tonight, one of seven in the first half. That guy could step out and hit the three a little bit, Bobby Jones. Uh, I think I can't read lips, but I thought he said, please go and get dressed. Uh, you have another year. <laughs> Pause. Oh. Will not get credit for the basket. Coleman, though, will be charged with. The personal foul, Eric Coleman, five of seven shooting, five rebounds. That is his third. You always hate to see that an official gives you a call and it takes points away from you. Detman has the three point. There's the three. They double team pause, missed the steal, kicked it right out. And you haven't seen many easy threes like that. That's why they're not, they've got a low percentage because Northern Iowa is stopping penetration and they're not giving you dub the, the open threes they've had in the last couple nights. Huskies have come all the way back to even this one after trailing by eight in the first half. Jared Jostin leads for Brooks McCallum. A change to play. Shot clock is winding down and Coleman travel. And that's the same play they ran with a low clock last time. Only Coleman scored on it. They get down a low clock, they just step out, run a pick and roll, and he fades. It goes a little bit of one on one. Freshman, big part of both teams. Washington's 10 points, nine rebounds, seven turnovers in the first half. UNI has nine points, six rebounds, and three turnovers. A little sloppy here. And Coleman off the hustle play by Brown. Starts Northern Iowa back up the floor. Or John Stockton there as he stepped into Dentman to get a little space. Doesn't no, no, no reset, reset on the back, clock. But no reset of the clock. No right. over and back, nope, but nope no reset. reset. Von Dexter and Brown. Brockman going to earn a little floor burn there. And the shot clock in the end was all the way down to five seconds. Possession arrow favors Northern Iowa on the held ball. No reset. So that shot Unless clock gonna at say, five. Oh, they're saying Brockman had control of it. Then somebody jumped down on top of him and made the, the jump ball. It's Bill Kennedy, the lead official in this crew. And Lorenzo said nobody ever had possession. So here we go. Stout double teamed McCowan into the post and Haas. Boy, that's that's a big tree to shoot over. And Stout loses his footing. Coleman tries to save it, stepped on the line. <laughs> extra, 
after a whole half of a lot of poise, the ball was all over the place over the last two plays. <laughs> Told you, you need to have a stick down there sometimes, Coach. Washington looking for its first lead of the night. Actually, they had the lead early, but Brockman gets it back. No, they wave it off. Player control foul. Brockman with four. Oh, Lorenzo's going crazy on the sideline over there. I did not agree with that call. And I'm not the only one in the building either. You decide. He's got both hands on his back. They missed that. A little nudge, but I don't know. But that's four. He doesn't have any option but get him out of there. And he remains on the floor. He's got a sub waiting for him. Now. Wallace is coming in. Hawes is fouled by Brown, and now they'll make that exchange. Lorenzo Romar is still drawing at Bill Kennedy about that last foul call on Brockman. It's going to take a lot of trying to get him to <laughs> <laughs> Never worked for you, did it? <laughs> or any other coach I've ever seen. Pause working on Ego Sharks. We're going to see more of that this half. First play out of the shoot, they tried to go in the Haas, and there it was again. They didn't get their big people the ball enough on the block. Haas has six points. Talk about Romar's desire to get more out of his bigs. You run this much clock, in the end, does this favor either team? Well, you're definitely going to make him take a tough shot, except unless you're going to let him drive like that. Oh. Oh. Chose to know. Eggle Cedar did not touch the ball before the play clock <laughs> ran out off the air ball by Joston. No now, basket. Their bench is saying it hit the rim. And I think it might have. You, you think? That? Yeah, it could have. It was awful close. We'd have needed the third official to settle that one, you and me. Need, uh... Yeah, that was, a, it was tough to look at. Tough to see. Coleman's working on a double double. He's already got 10 points. Boy, it's physical in here. Eggel Cedar. Great rotation, Brown. Coleman back up and. Uh, Wallace will be called for the block. Now they're going to call it on Haas. You know, I think if Haas would have given on that play, he might have got the charge because Coleman just Coleman caused all the contact. You had him under the basket. You had him locked up. That's when you've got to do a little bit of acting. Coleman with 10 points and seven rebounds, and he's in position to break the tie. College basketball and FSN brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horns. 9700 and change. Grabbing a pretty good basketball game that may be settled by inches or a close call one way or the other. Bond this This one could go right down to the wire. It's kind of looking that way. Haas on the bench now with two. Bond has two. Brockman. Has four. John Brockman has played only 10 minutes in this ball game. Seven in the first, three in the second half. Coleman a little bit long. Eric Coleman, junior out of Maplewood, Minnesota, is their biggest player, really. But well, 6'6", 240, he is their stoutest player, shall we say? But boy, I'll tell you, you pointed it out before. He can really move for a guy of size. You know he's one of those players that plays a lot bigger than than his his tape size. His, his arms are really long, and he is you know he's wide shouldered. Uh, 
Again, working on Jones. Gasser. Feet were on the line. That would have been a deuce. Jones's rebound. Detman and Pondexter, the starters on the floor for Washington. McCowan and Coleman for Northern Iowa. Jostin got nothing there and afterward ran into Pondexter to draw a personal foul. Three against Jared Jostin. You know, when I watch McCowan, I almost feel like I'm watching a, a John Stockton type of guard. He's not as uh, not as quick, not quite as talented, but he has the same control of his team that a John Stockton does when he's on the floor, or did, excuse me. I bet he's still playing somewhere. Over in Spokane, where he has settled. He's actually helped mentor the Sonics young point man, Luke Ridnow. We had a career high 32 points last night as the Sonics won the finale of their long five game road trip at New Jersey. Pick up the schedule tomorrow night against Bobby Jones in Philadelphia. Once again, you need a stick. That basketball has a mind of its own. Is that a held ball? It is. Washington possession. Huskies have no offensive rebounds this half after they made a pretty good living of that in the first half. Could be one of the things. You said, what is Coach Jacobson going to talk about at halftime? That could have been it. Justin Denton. Smo Valley guys know him. He grew up in Carbondale, Illinois, originally committed to Illinois State. Time taken. It did not reset the shot clock on the held ball there. Well, with eight seconds left, he's going to try and draw up a play. He's, he's got an eight-second uh, or a 20-second timeout or... Or 30. Did you take it 30? No. Oh. <laughs> I can't remember what league I'm in. Sonics, the only place to catch them right here on FSN. We've got Kevin Calabro and the Hall of Famer Lenny Wilkins calling the action every game in high depth. Tomorrow, 6.30, we start with FSN Live as the Sonics host this guy right here, Bobby Jones, the Philadelphia 76ers. You can win tickets to the next Sonics home game at Key Arena, a new era of Sonics basketball, and you can watch it here on FSN. Jones... Taken 37th overall by the Philadelphia 76ers. Brandon Roy, the fifth overall pick, playing in Portland. Jamal Williams and Mike Jensen are also playing professionally. Jensen in China, Williams in Europe. Pondexter. With eight seconds, the play he drew up worked. He got a good open shot for uh, Gasser, but uh, he, he missed it. Get another chance. There's that offensive rebound you were talking about. Gasser setting the pick. Pondexter posting McCowan. That's the third snow cone tonight. Whose ball is it? Huskies basketball. Oliver with the hustle play. That's well, amazing for his size how many rebounds he gets in the paint. You know, a lot of guards you see run him down at the free throw line, but uh, Oliver's gotten several right there by the hoop tonight. No hesitation this time. The freshman Adam Cook with the rebound for the Panthers. We've been stuck on 33 for quite a while now. Well, it's amazing how when, when you don't get a lot of easy looks, how much the percentage goes down. When you do get an open look, it's, it's so much harder to knock it down. Cook on the show and go. Gasser grabbed his jersey. No call. Pondexter, another rebound. Four minutes since anybody scored, but here we go. Artem Wallace has had some moments of struggle tonight, but he breaks the tie and puts Washington back on the high side. Coach Romar's going inside, let those big men work. Put this score in perspective Washington's lowest point total last year was 54. McCowan rolls in, check that feet, rolls in a three ball. They didn't get to keep that lead long. But they got it right back. Boom. Yeah. 
I like Oliver. He's going to be a nice player. Beats three point shot was the first three pointer made tonight by Northern Iowa. They are one of seven now. Washington, two of 11 beyond the arc, shooting 37% overall, 45% for the Panthers. Cowan gets a rub, finds beat in the corner, two out of two. McCowan just won't let him get flustered. Good pressure. He runs the clock down, draws, kicks. It's a nice three for his team. Denman comes right back saying, I'm going to make something happen. Good drive. We're staying here. McCowan assessed his first personal foul, 15 foul, 5 to 2. Northern Iowa and Washington on the foul count. Appleby wasting no time. That was nice execution. There was a little bit of subtle diversion there. Apple re ran, got free. Drained it. Works off the screen to stay with his man, beat in the corner. Can't get the roll this time. Oliver does a great job to avoid traveling. That's three in a row for V, isn't it? That's nice right there. That's nice basketball. Coaches love it. <laughs> But I can just give you a position and let you come down and get him an easy two. Washington's biggest lead of the night at three points. And I'm betting one more score and it's a timeout. If they can get a stop here. Oh, that's it. Away from the play. I think they got Oliver for a hold. Jacobson gets to draw another one up for the Panthers. Set plays have put Washington back into the lead, though not by much. Whatever they're doing, it's working. Oh, this is a nice one here. You got Appleby sitting here. He's looking over to his right. Watch the fake pick here. Burmeister's going to sell it too. And Appleby, we're getting this guy thinking it's going to the corner, and then it's going to the corner, but the other corner. Appleby with his second yes, three point shot. Northern Iowa's Bigs had Ooh, 25 they, points <laughs> in the first half, and those by Coleman, their first of the second half. And they show you that they can run a little trick play too off the set. Nice execution. Coleman has 12 to lead all scores. Haas responding. He has eight now. Four bait shooting from the floor. That's going to be big. If they can get the ball into him, once they start double teaming, he'll pick him apart with his passing. Half a dozen for Washington's big. But look at Stout. That's two plays in a row. They set up two plays in the timeout to try and get easy buckets. Scored on both of them. Grant Stout has 10 points. Scored the first six. Of the ball game for the Panthers. Okay, get them organized. Get them organized. There you go. Jared Joston is called for the personal foul. That is his checking three or four. He's got four. That's a nice cut by Appleby. When somebody's getting physical with you, you don't want to just back off. You want to run through the contact. You've got to draw the foul. Joston has to take a seat, but as does Lorenzo Romar, Ben Jacobson has some good depth and balance on the Northern Iowa bench. Got a moving pick there. Appleby assessed his first personal, 14 foul. Six on Northern Iowa, so Washington one common foul away from the one on one. McCowan driving and kicking, and Veet has missed two in a row after making consecutive three pointers. Brandon Burmeister. Just a little bit out of his range on that one. I don't know if it was out of his range, but he didn't want to quite shoot it that far. Pause. Again, no shooters roll tonight. That's four or five tonight that have not fallen. Coleman, look at that, finding Brown. He was too deep, he knew it. He looked back and found Brown for the lay-in, and the Panthers are back in the lead. 
This is a well played basketball game by two teams tonight that have some talent and can execute. Let's talk about this though. You understand the defense is more than I was specialty. So essentially that's what we're playing here. A defensive game. So unless Washington can get on a little bit of a run does that give Northern Iowa the advantage down the stretch. Uh, it's uh, it's going to come down to who executes right at the end. Is that one of those why is there air questions. <laughs> I guess so. Look at Brown. Oh, no. For the deuce and all of a sudden Brown has put a couple back in the hole. He had 16 points and seven rebounds against Pepperdine last night. I do think that Northern Iowa is getting more easy scores out of their. Uh, oh, that had to be a foul, and it was. Who's he looking at? So far, Northern Iowa has gotten easier buckets running out of their defense than Washington has. Call was against Beat. One and one now. Brandon Burmeister will go to the free throw line. It's a one on one. You gotta make that first. Brockman back on the floor with four personal fouls. No run in this ball game longer than seven points, and that was Northern Iowa's. Last year, Burmeister 7 to 12 on charity. So that was a percentage shot right there. Yeah. Washington has a couple of fouls to give. Brown for Coleman finds McCowan finds air and out of bounds. Pond Dexter could not control it after he touched it. So Northern Iowa gets the ball in a fresh 35 second clock. Well, McCowan is one for ten <laughs> for a smart point guard that's running his team. I don't, I don't understand why he takes that with a fairly early clock. The baseline beat. Oh, it's good feed. Great idea. He couldn't handle it. Let's see if he's got this one. No air ball. He was wide open. He was open. Oz will post up Coleman and score. That's great. He caught the ball. He looked to see if there was going to be a double team. When the double team didn't come, then he took his time, got to where he wanted, got the shot he wanted. Spencer Haas is in double digits again tonight after being limited last night. Stout falls backboard has himself a dozen points. You know he doesn't have a lot of movement in his post ups but he's very effective with it. He just gets off a nice shot. First half he scored one. Over Hawes. Rockman feeds out of the double team and then. Over the back comes V. That's his third personal foul. Time with seven and change. Northern Iowa holding on to a three point lead in the defensive battle at the B of A. Northern Iowa with a three point lead. Very impressive. Bob Weiss on set plays off the inbounds. That's right. Here's the two they ran last time. You can't see what's happening. But he's posted up like he wants the ball, and then he spins and goes for the open layup. That's the first play out of the timeout. And we can watch and see what they're going to run this next time. Here's the next one. They set a double high pick and roll. They're clearing out this side. This man is the only one who can make the pass. The big is going to slip to the basket. Go ahead and run it. And there he's delivering. And I'm trying to turn it off. Working your etch a sketch <laughs> down there. There we go. <laughs> man. Pond Dexter. Great execution. Now they're coming out of a dead ball here. Let's see if he tries something uh, slick again. He was fouled while battling underneath the basket. Washington on charity. Five out of seven. Seven to ten free throws for Northern Iowa. They're picking up the pressure, but valuing the basketball. Four turnovers aside this half, both sides 
in double digits in the first 20 minutes. This is the championship game of the Basketball Travelers Classic from the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Brown runs away from Pondexter, out of control. Oh. Brockman thought he'd done enough to earn a charge. And I agree with it. They did try to go for a lob for the center. It wasn't there. So they wisely didn't make the pass. Now they run it. Pondexter rolling. Got nothing but off the defender's hands, out of bounds. Coach Romar had an ISO for Pondexter up his sleeve. Now he couldn't quite get to the hoop. No iron on the shot, so 14 seconds to shoot. 14. Stout. Nice save. What a play. Not for nothing have these guys been to the tournament three years in a row. Stout, Stout is a solid player. Some teams run a drill where they, they bounce the balls that's going out of bounds. You have to grab it, turn around, and find the player. They also run drills for that. <laughs> he um, has a little bit of range. Yes. You know, I, I, I didn't expect that. I don't think he does, did either. Well, last year he only took five three point shots. Haas with the hook responds. Haas takes the scoring lead for the Huskies. Grant Stout last year took five three pointers, made one. <laughs> He took that one like he knew what he was doing. Now timing is everything. Posting up Brockman Haas with the block. And we're going the other way. Spencer Haas had four blocks in his collegiate debut. The most highly touted recruit in Washington basketball history. Got himself a block there and now stop we'll one of the foul on this one. But Haas did not bring his hands down. Nagel Cedar got him from behind. And will sit. Coleman returns. Stout has a game high 15 points now. Hawes again 12 for Washington with five rebounds. With a chance here to tie. Spencer Hawes, a state champion at Seattle Prep. 20 points, 10 rebounds a game. Three blocks as well. Good defender. Good defender. Well, we got some money on the table now, coach. <laughs> Denton. There we go. The pressure finally got to him. He lost one. Tipped it off of McCowan, says Bill Kennedy. Tell you this, the point guard is one with his coach. If you look at the expression on both of their faces, and Dentman left a little sweat slick on the floor, so they'll take care of that. The shoe dub team is not afraid to get in the floor. Justin Dentman tonight with two assists, five rebounds. They have spread around. The floor general responsibilities and Haas again. Tried a little left handed flip shot. Between him and Brockman. Wasn't for bad luck, they'd have no luck at all. Ooh. Dodged the bullet there. Maybe. Oh. Stallman was wide open on his cut, but didn't get the ball. Oh, Dittman. McCowan set his feet and draws the charge. Denman wisely thought he was going to get the call, tried to throw the ball up like it was a shot. Let's take a look. Take a look at it. Panthers do a terrific job of getting back in transition. They had three men back. I don't know that McCowan's feet were set. No, he was doing some acting on that one. Get the stretcher, coach. Nice play. Coleman, great effort. Stout, a tremendous effort. Off of Pondexter. 
to Northern Iowa. Terrific hustle in the low post by Northern Iowa. And Coleman's made some nice passes tonight. Detman has 11 points. Coleman has a dozen. Where are they going here? Coleman's got those flypaper hands. If he get his hand out of it, he's going to grab it. Jostin playing with four fouls himself. Great individual battles between the guards. McCowan turns the corner on Dentman, kicks out to Brown. I think Stout right. knocked Brockman down in the paint. And that's going to be a two shot foul. That was a big play. They were battling in there. Stout just uh, got frustrated, threw him away. Tenth team foul puts Washington in the super bonus. Look the top See, of your frame. That was a good block out. That was a good block out. He threw him down. Brockman has but two points tonight. One of five from the floor. This is his first free throw. Brockman last night had 12 points in the second half. His second double double in his many games here at the Basketball Travelers Classic. A little short. Stick man's worth of a lead for the Huskies. Got to have, uh, really got to control the ball. And Coleman knocked Pondexter down, and that is his fourth personal foul. We were lucky there because Coleman was going to dunk that ball, but Coleman pushed off as he was going after the pick. Leave your hand off the remote. You're not going to want to miss this finish at the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. Sitting courtside for a dandy with you on FSN. You know, you said in the open, you talked about the Northern Iowa's defense. They're holding the Huskies to 39% shooting. The Huskies are staying in a game with 15 offensive rebounds and by keeping their turnovers down. They've only got 16 tonight, 15 by Northern Iowa, so that, that's pretty even. But I think down the stretch here, turnovers are going to be big. But look at the advantage in points off turnovers for the Panthers. Plus 14. As Dentman turns the corner on McCowan, and then Justin did a great job of denying Appleby. Time taken, 30 seconds taken by Lorenzo Romar, whose guys will have 30, or rather 20 seconds to shoot when they resume. It was uh, that was a good timeout because he saw his team in trouble. Took time out. Okay, we go over to the sideline. Calm them down. Get a good play. Tune in Thursday for a full evening of football right here on FSN Northwest, starting with Warren Moon. Brings you inside the Seahawks, then switch to the college ranks. We've got Huskies All Access, followed by FSN Classics. Appropriately, the Apple Cup from 02. We cap off the night with FSN Live. Tailgate Thursdays only on FSN. Apple Cup this weekend, Washington at Washington State. Now one thing Washington has to watch out for Northern Iowa loves to slip the pick and rolls and they've just had you know just had a dead ball situation time to talk about it. You really got to be careful and in your overplays to be in containment because they will go for an easy bucket here coming out of this possession. Nice job of Jostin to deny Appleby the three pointer that's been as I say a tremendous matchup tonight. Pondexter. Get out of there. All right. This is an Appleby layup here from 20. Bang. <laughs> I can say nothing, coach. You're all over it. It's a two possession basketball the, game now. The clock was running down. You could see him just teeing it up. Washington's largest lead of the night, Appleby, with 14 points. Coleman has been a beast in the post and draws the foul. Spencer Hawes with his third 16 foul against Washington. Here's that Appleby three again. The clock is at seven now, so he he knows I can't do very much with this. I'm just going to get my rhythm. What do they call it? Football? He got a third five yard field goal, a chip shot for that. For him, that's a chip shot. It's an NBA three right there. 
Coleman. They ran a nice pick to get Coleman open under the hoop. Misfi misfired his first two free throws, so he's one of three for 14 points. He's one rebound away from a double double, and this time he's aces for deuces, and it's a two point basketball game. Aces for deuces. Don't ask me what I just said. <laughs> Brockman just inside oh, the arc. Yeah. Don Brockman shooting 67% the first two games. He is two of six tonight. Good defense now. One shot. Whoa, there goes the foot. Wow. That was the second time down. Man, you know they're going to go for man. something cute. You just can't gamble. McCowan has got nine assists. Coleman with 16 points. And inside, Stout knocks Spencer Hawes down. So suddenly Grant Stout has three, the all MVC player and all Mo Valley defender from last season. Picked again for the all conference team going in. 2006 2007 and he showed he's deserving of it tonight tell you what I'm impressed with coach Jacobson's calls out of the huddle he's, he's he's done a terrific job tonight hey think about this three straight trips to the NCAA tournament the last two years they have gone as an at-large team yeah it's uh, out of the Missouri Valley <laughs> It's not easy. I mean, you've got to be doing something right. The word does get around. That is not just a popularity contest. Okay, they got to they got to put some pressure on. But you can't you can't put too much pressure on these big guys. Coleman rejected by Hawks. That was great defense, folks. Detman coast to coast. These fans are responding. So, are the, so is their team. Ben Jacobson needs time. Just under 8,000 on their feet and howling for the dogs in Seattle. You know, one thing Coach Romar wants to do now with that young team is tell them this is not over, folks. They're going to the huddle celebrating. Okay, here's good defense. Watch this drive. Coleman says, okay, I got this big guy out here. I can make something happen. Terrific defense. And look before the, in the entry pass, Appleby and Jostin. Appleby gave Jostin no room to receive the basketball. Detman pays it off the other end. He sure does. But like I said, these guys, they're going over there. Everybody's celebrating. They're only up six with two minutes to go. This is when you got to tell those young guys, hey, quit celebrating. This game is still right in the middle of it. Last night, Romar called time a couple of times. They had a 40 point lead at one point on Nickel State and wound up winning by 28. Romar did not like the way they lost concentration. At one point, the Colonels, playing with only eight men, ran off 11 straight points to cut into the deficit, get everybody's attention. Tonight, I think his team is hearing Romar's entreaties about concentration. Brown. Inside to score over Pondexter. Great body control. He had a slide by a defender there, so he didn't take a charge. Still made the bucket. Travis Brown, six points all here in the second half. Brockman on the block. And Coleman got two hands into him, and that's the call. He'll go to the line on that one. Is that five fouls on Coleman? It is. Boy, that's a serious blow to the Panthers. That Eric is. Coleman disqualified with his fifth personal foul. Well, it's a big blow for two reasons. You're down a little bit, you're coming down, but what if this game goes to overtime? Jostin is also playing with four. He leaves, Coleman does, with 16 points, nine rebounds, three assists. At the other end, Spencer Hawes has blocked three shots. Let's take a look inside. Here we'll see his last foul. See, so put two hands on it before, and he didn't call it. So I, I think 
that was triggered by what happened just before the call. You know, you, you, if you make a borderline play on a guy, you don't want to hit him again because the, the next touch foul is going to go against you. Can't use both hands. No. Can't extend the arms. No. Get Rock quiet them. in here. Oh. Five of his seven points in the second half. And Washington goes to a zone. They make him shoot the three. On which they are three of 15. Look at Stout battling another offensive rebound in the putback. That friends is senior leadership. Highest point total. Over that. 17 over that. points. For any Northern Iowa player in this tournament. Oh, oh, oh you don't. Want to. <laughs> All you do is hang on. Appleby floored McCowan as he came out to screen for his men. And now seventh team foul against Washington. That was not a good turnover, folks. Could have taken the clock down, played one defense, then they'd have been in fouling mode. Now what you want here you don't want them getting a real quick shot quick easy bucket so that they're going to get the ball back. Rockman will sit. Washington with a 30 second timeout in the final 47 seconds of regulation. This is smart because you can set your defense but it's dangerous because you're letting them set their offense. Spencer Hawes three blocks 16 points which is for his three game collegiate career a career high six rebounds Washington down to its last time out you and I has three. Spencer Hawes seven feet of shot block and power for the Huskies all of his blocks here in the second half had four the other night you know he had three blocks but he's had a lot of changes you know whenever you see I have a shot blocker uh, you see what the results are in the blocks but the stat that they can't keep track of is how many shots does he change how many times does the guy walk because he's looking for where is this shot blocker so he is very valuable. Seasoned as well in the respect that last night he struggled, played only 16 minutes, four points, four turnovers, and shook that right off and came back here ready to go tonight. No, and uh, against, you know, a lot stiffer competition. This has been the game of the tournament, and it is again for the title in the Basketball Travelers Classic. Okay, we want to make them work for at least 10, 11 seconds. We don't want to give an open three. We certainly don't want to foul anybody for a three point play inside. Detman doesn't want to give him a clear look. Oh, we got to move it. Oh, Stout is called on the baseline. Foul. And that's four. That's the other thing. Haas has been giving him a battle, particularly here in the second half. Let's take a look. Watch this move. Nice play. They ran a shooter off a double pick on the other side. Now they ran somebody off of this side. Oh, Stout moves on. Bumped Pond Dexter right into our cameraman on the baseline. Pressure. Dentman is fouled by McCowan. Can't believe it. Justin Dentman will shoot two. McCowan, the senior out of Fairbank, Iowa. You really got to get that one clean to not have it be called a foul. Nine assists tonight for McCowan to go along with now a couple of personal fouls. And Stout is playing with four. Brown with three. Jostin with four. Netman doesn't have the assist and turnover numbers he wants, but everything else is okay. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, he's made some big plays in transition. He, he's made some things happen uh, just when you needed somebody to come up and, and make something happen for your team. And that's what Coach Romar wants him to do. Last year that was Roy. This year it's got to be him. And Adrian Oliver can make it happen for you a little bit too. I think Brockman's gone. And he is. 
Oh boy. Huskies are shooting 50% here in the second half after shooting 38% in the first half. Overall in the night, 43% for the dogs, 45% for the Panthers. Rockman six. And he's got to be disappointed with himself. All he wants to do is make them use up time and you, and you take a you know you it's a reflex you take a swipe at the ball you, know, you just can't help yourself you put them on the line gives them a, a quick two one and one or a quick a, and a quick attempt at two with the, the your operative point with the clock stop well they got the break Pondexter tips it to Hawes and now Jostin commits the foul he's done Pondexter will head to the free throw line. Gritzy <laughs> Pondexter so excited to get up there and shoot too. He, he was across the, the timeline before any of his teammates. Uh, Dentman will shoot. Dentman will yeah. But Pondexter so excited about getting down there and getting a chance. He beat everybody up the floor and everybody said, wait, well, come back here. we got to talk about this. He probably hustles to the shower. Well, he hustles. There's no question about it. Pondexter's dad Roscoe played at Long Beach State for Lute Olson and his uncle Cliff played three years for the Chicago Bulls in the NBA. Yeah, we didn't get to play together. Cliff came uh, just a little bit after I left uh, Chicago. Dentman four out of four from the free throw line tonight. Five of ten from the floor, six rebounds. Huskers had to bring the lunch bucket tonight. It was an all night job. You know, and uh, if Coach Romar could have scripted this, this is the kind of game he would have liked. A tough game, a tight game, and with his team prevailing in the end, but making them work for it. Haas will sit. McCowan will race to the basket and draw a charge. It's nice when you can learn and win at the same time. Appleby so quick to get back and got his feet set before McCowan made his move. And down eight, Jacobson takes one of his three remaining timeouts. This is a 30. Washington in position to go to 3 0 on the season. Huskies will take a break and then play Sacramento State here in this building. On Sunday afternoon, we'll have the game at 1 o'clock right here on FSN. The one thing they might be talking about in the huddle, one of your options as a coach is, you know, you say, okay, maybe we don't want to foul on the first pass. We want to go lock that one up with a double team. If they get it out of there, okay, then we take the quick foul. But give yourself a chance to pick up a steal and some baskets without putting them on the free throw line. They may just take the foul when they have to, but we'll see what happens. To the program note on Washington, Northern Iowa will go home and open their brand new building, in the Cloud Center. Yeah, they did double first. Now they'll probably take a foul. Wisconsin, Milwaukee, in at Cedar Falls this weekend, and they do take the foul. Brandon Burmeister, and the two seniors, along with Hans Gasser, on this Washington roster, will shoot a couple. Missed his only other attempt in a one on one situation earlier. Hey, if you're Northern Iowa, how about getting into a new building where the capacity is about 6,500? You've been playing in that UNI dome. Yeah, they'll be, uh, they'll be excited about that when they go back home. Loud, a successful program. So they essentially get out of the cave. And into an atmosphere like the Huskies have enjoyed here. Yeah, makes a big difference. I'll tell you where it makes a difference is you <laughs> you recruit the players that want to play there, and uh, and you win more. It was 31-28. Panthers favor at the half. 
down the stretch here Washington has pulled away. It's 31 28 with their big men having all but five points and in the second half that was uh, an adjustment that Washington made they went more to their big men choked off the big men for Northern Iowa came up with a win. Pondexter will take it out and the Huskies will enjoy the fruits of this labor and it, a labor it was <laughs> as they trailed by eight in the first half by three at intermission but come back to post a 10 point victory holding Northern Iowa to 29 points in the second half and winning by 10. That was a well deserved and uh, hard fought contest well deserved win. This for Washington. The third straight regular season tournament win. And on FSN Northwest FSN Live starts right now. Brian Davis and Bob Weiss at Bank of America Arena. Huskies win this one tonight with John Brockman in foul trouble for most of the evening. Only played seven minutes in the first half with three personals. Picked up the fourth personal almost immediately inside the first couple three minutes of the second half. And Yet Washington finds a way to persevere tonight when they needed production in the post. Well, yeah, and their, their bench came in and did the job they were supposed to. 